Okay, so I said that there were two factions that were new to the Overhaul sub mod, and I've already done one. Now, the other... Really, it's a case of the Sylvan Elves have kind of been split off into two factions, really. At least that's the way it feels. So I'll do the one that feels most new now, and that would be the Woodland Realm. So I'll set up a little demonstration, and then we'll go through their units. Okay, so here are the Woodland Realms, and you'll notice that I've given myself 5,000 florins extra, and that is because the elves are extortionately expensive in this submod. To be honest with you, it's if you gave them like 20k to 20k in a battle, they're actually underpowered because of the amount of troops you can't afford. Now, the Woodland Realms are probably the most affordable of all of the elven factions by a bit, but that's not saying very much. All of their units are still hugely expensive and it is to the faction's detriment at this point because it's their quality is very very high but it's not quite high enough to make up for their unit deficit that they have. So let's go through their units one by one and we start off with the Wardens of Erinor. Now <coughs> excuse me. These now this is one of the most basic units you can have and they're 1250 florins. That's more expensive than the most expensive Dunland unit. So that should tell you the philosophy that the elves run on. And I wouldn't mind that if not for the fact that the elves, they don't tend to make up for this unit deficit all that well. Nonetheless, the stats are very, very impressive. 9, 21, and 4 is very, very good for a sword and shield unit, naturally. And there's really not much to say about the sword and shield units. They will do what they do, and they will do it very, very well. But Again, not really a lot of them, and they are expensive. Although you will be using these guys more so than the even more expensive units just to pad out your army. So we'll probably be using these in our unit composition when we come to choosing that. Okay, so next up we have the Woodland Axemen. Now these guys can do Skilltron, which is kind of unique for an axe unit, but their stats are significantly lower and they are more expensive. But the thing that I think makes them worth it is that they are effective against armor. So you can go up against heavily armoured units and do a significant amount of damage with them, but I will say that their survivability is too low for their florin, so chances are you won't be using these guys an awful lot. You don't really want to be aggressive as the elves anyway, so they kind of lose their appeal. Nonetheless, it's a nice option to have, because honestly, armour piercing is something that some of your other lower tier units, although to use low tier in terms of the elves is probably doing them a disservice, something that they don't have. So that's worth bearing in mind. Nonetheless, I would say that their survivability is what lets them down. Next we have the Woodland Spearmen. Now these, of course, they can do skill charm. They're pretty much the equivalent of the Sylvan Spearmen in vanilla third age, just like these guys, the equivalent of the Forest Wardens. They will do pretty much everything the regular Sylvan Spearmen will do, only because spears are slightly more effective in this submod, they will do it a little bit better. They are also the cheapest basic unit I think you can have with the elves at least that aren't a general bodyguard unit. So yeah, spears, they'll do exactly what they say on tin. They will I'm not sure that they will be the best for warding off cavalry because there's so few of them that a good cavalry charge will probably destroy most of their effectiveness almost immediately. So you do need to be careful, you need to micro them well if you're gonna put them up against cavalry, but nonetheless they will hold better than many, many other spears in this mod. Now we have the Knights of Erinor, essentially again, like they have the armour of the Woodland Warriors of the Sylvan Elves in the vanilla, and that's pretty much what they are, they're shock infantry, they have very good stats, they are they have the effectiveness against armour, they are much more worth it than the Woodland Axemen in my opinion, the only difference is they can't do skill tron, every other way though they are better, they have, they're well armoured, they've got way better stats, they have a bonus against cavalry as well because they have a two handed axe. Although I will voice that you use a bit of caution when using these guys, because again, they are shock infantry, and as the elves, you want to be very, very careful, even more so in this submod, because of the numbers deficit you are going to have. Nonetheless, very, very good unit, provided you can use them correctly. Next up, we have the Erinor Guard Swordsmen. These are pretty much the equivalent to the heavy swordsman units that the elves have in vanilla. They have better stats all round, they're much better, they're much more survivable in this mod, but they do have less in their unit now, so it's kind of like they've given with one hand but taken with the other. Nonetheless, they will outperform in terms of quality pretty much any unit that a non-elven faction 
will be able to feel, but the problem is you just won't be able to have many of them. Look at how expensive they are. 2,100 florins, which means pretty much you're, going to, you're only going to be allowed to have one. And even then, that's, you know, that might not be the case because you might have to sacrifice it to have, say, two spears instead. So that's, I don't know, like the price is really too extortionate to use them super effectively, but having one at the center of your lines will allow you to have that elite edge over another faction, I suppose. Moving on to the Eranor Guard Spearmen, again, you know, they are pretty much the equivalent to the Sylvan and the Elder Enway Heavy Spears. They have a huge amount of defense, and they will pretty much do exactly what they did before, in that they will hold the line in a way that no other Elven unit can. They will do slightly more damage now as well. The problem is, there isn't enough of them in a unit, and you will not be able to have enough units of them on the field to make up for that. Like, if you have four... That's an enormous amount of money you've invested, and that is to the detriment of your army's numbers. And then you're easy to surround with either cavalry or just sheer numbers of infantry like you can be with the orcs. The Sindar archers, they're, you know, as they were before. The archers have been nerfed across the board, but they are much, much better in melee now. But there are only 40 of them now. And I think they are actually, well, aside from the Bjornings, they are the cheapest infantry unit you can get as the elves. So. You know, while their missile damage is very, very good for a bow unit in the submod, there isn't really enough of them to get their arrows down range, nor is there enough of them to be useful in any other way. It's, you need to get the numbers where you can as the elves, and I don't think the Sindar archers offer that anymore. Whereas in vanilla, I think they were slightly more viable. The centuries of Erinor are a javelin unit. Now, this I think is probably one of the better units you can use as the elves because their missile damage is very, very 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 high and they also have quite a lot in their unit now in melee they're not brilliant but they're not much worse honestly than some of these units down here so i think these guys will be worth it having said that 1200 florins is an awful lot for a javelin unit and 10 is honestly pretty lackluster in terms of damage for a javelin unit in this sub mod most javelins will be doing between 11 and 14 missile damage these guys will only have 10. Nonetheless, you may be forced to use them just to pad out your army a little bit. Javelins, of course, with the buff they got in the submod are significantly more effective. And it might be something that you need to use. Nonetheless, the archers are naturally across the board pretty damned effective with the elves. Woodland archers, these are the basic ones. They only have 7 missile damage, which is pretty high for this submod, but... You need to get as much missiles downrange as you can, and they need to be doing the damage to the enemy to equalize the numbers. And I'm not entirely convinced that these guys will be where your money is well spent, because 1440 florins, that's a bit too much, I think. Their stats in melee are kind of decent, but I would say that you should probably invest in your archers more heavily than you would with any other non-elven faction, if you're playing as the Woodland Realms. The Woodland Rangers are pretty much identical. The only difference is they can deploy sharpened stakes, so I don't see why you wouldn't use these guys. They have, you know, basically the utility of these guys is slightly better than it would be with the Woodland Archers. They also look cooler, so I would suggest using these over the Woodland Archers, because it's not like you can only use two before the cost increases. If you're going to use the lower tier Archers of the Woodland Realms, go for the Rangers. Next we have the Guard Archers. Of course these are pretty much the equivalent to the Heavy Archers of the Elves in Vanilla Mod. Nonetheless, they can deploy Sharpened Stakes as well, which is interesting. It's something they couldn't do before. But they also have the lower unit count, which is unfortunate, but they are far, far better in melee. So again, take with one hand, give with the other. I don't know if this is worth it, because you can only really have one, maximum two before it starts to get a bit extortionate. I don't know. I think maybe you have to have two, just to try and make use of your better archers. We'll see. Then we have the Woodland Nobles. This, in my mind, is the best general bodyguard unit you can field, because they have essentially the same amount, the same sort of stats as these guys, only they're more expensive, because they're better armoured, I suppose. They're a little bit more durable in melee, but... Look at how expensive they are. That's nearly 3,000 florins, which is a huge amount of money. There are some orc factions which can deploy half an army for 3,000 florins, and it's just not worth the 3,000. Like, I'm, it's just not. 
Then you have one cavalry unit, the Erinor Horse Archers. The Horse Archers, I think, are a little bit better in this mod because the AI for them is a little bit better, I think. They can't do shoot... Well, they actually can do shooting circle now, which is interesting. That's good. Six missile damage is probably not enough, although 960 is a decent value for money proposition that you're getting from these guys. So I would suggest that you use these guys most of the time simply because it's one of the few units you have which is cost effective. And I do like cost effective units, so for once it looks like the elves do have a cost efficient unit. This submod really did hammer them in terms of cost efficiency. They of course have a ballista and a catapult, you know, not really a lot needed to say there. The Bjornings, you know, they are kind of a strange unit. They're, they work pretty much the same as they do in vanilla. Their stats are not brilliant. The transformation into bears is something I've only ever seen once, and that was offline when I was doing a few tests. So, I don't know. They are cheap. You might want to use these guys to pad out your line a little bit because of how cheap they are. But, you know, nonetheless, I would say that they're not fantastic simply because their defense score is so low. They'll get butchered in this mod with such a low defense. But, again, you might not have a choice other than to use them simply because they're the only unit that the elves have which is below 500. And you're going to need those numbers on your side to make sure you don't get flanked. And then finally we have the Ents. Now the Ents are something which will probably be banned in most cases because of how strong they are. Look at the stats on them, look at the hit points. But I would say there's actually a case for saying that the Woodland Realm should be allowed a, the use of one Ent unit simply because they're sacrificing so much in terms of numbers. I don't know, like the Ents are immensely overpowered naturally but I think that they don't really have much choice other than to use them in order to make them a competitive faction which might be why this faction is laid out like this it might be that they've tried to make it so the Ents are something which is no longer banned but necessary to make the faction competitive but I don't know I mean the Ents are you know a very very overpowered unit but it might be something that you need to use in order to make the woodland realms and indeed any elven faction or well, at least Lothlorien have the, El the Ents as well the high elves have got some different tools that they can use but I think there is a case for saying that the woodland realms and Lothlorien need the use of the Ents in order to become competitive in a same funds match otherwise you're going to need to give, give the elves more funds than the other faction and I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we'll we'll start picking our um Okay, so I was going to use ants, but unfortunately the game crashed, so I don't think we'll be able to use them in this situation. I just want to showcase the faction more so than just a single unit like this. So I will forego the ants. Um so instead of that, I will have this, this. I'll have three spearmen instead. <coughs> Excuse me. And I will have four Bjornings again. I'll have three Eranor Knights. I will have four Spears. Oh yeah, what, what am I doing? Ooh. Group my archers together. Right, um, one, two, one, two, three. Oh, actually, we've got five archers now, so I'll have to forego one of them. Keep within the rules that I use for myself. Um, so we want three Knights. We want four Spearmen. What else do we want? Mm, four Bjornings. We want a catapult, and then we have 1600 wood. Well, we can buy another Knight of Erinor. Excellent. Okay. We'll try this. Okay, so let's set up, shall we? Now, I'm going to need to be very defensive in this situation. I've given the Orcs very much a melee-centric build. I have given the Orcs some archers so that they can attempt to whittle me down from a distance. But they will have to come to me, and I will have to play defensively. Right, okay, so I'm going to want to have my elite spears here, I think. We'll have form a sort of box, I think. Going to have to. You really don't have much choice with the elves because of how few troops you have. You need to keep them together. You need to make sure they don't get surrounded, otherwise they'll get routed by lesser units. So we'll have that. We'll have 
the knights as the first line of reinforcement. I will actually have the um, the catapult right up close, um, so that we can try and get some shots into their line immediately. We'll have the knights in behind them, like so, so we can reinforce the line if need be. We'll have the yawning sort of out wide. I've given the orcs some trolls as well, so they'll be able to do some significant damage even to my elite units, which is going to be a situation you're going to find yourself in quite a lot. Then we will have my archers. My archers will go sort of one and one behind the spears, I think. My elite archers. They're very good in melee, but I really want to get their missiles downrange before I start doing any of that. Get my spears into guard mode. What have we got over here? Ah, yes, the woodland rangers. We'll put the woodland rangers. Uh, we'll put them just in behind the catapult, I suppose. And we shall have the knights fall back just a little bit. And then the Sindar archers, my general, can go at the back here. Great looking unit models, though for the elves. I do like the woodland rangers as well. They're pretty cool. But still by far and away the coolest looking unit they have are the heavy spears I believe. Very excellent unit. So we shall start the battle. Enormous orc army. So they can fire at will. They're in range already. One of the perks of being the elves. Right, wherever the trolls go, I'm going to need to deploy all of my axemen, or at least a big amount of my axemen, to deal with them, because they can do a significant amount of damage to my spears. In fact, because of where they're deployed, I'm going to move my spears to be more like this, and my Bjornings can go out wide like this. The archers are firing away. The Snagger archers are right up front. No, do I want to go for the cave trolls with my catapult? No, I think it would honestly be a bit of a waste. The Snagger archers are terrible archers, but they are archers nonetheless. They have one missile damage, which is atrocious. Right, there are the trolls. It seems like they're going this way, so I'm going to... Right, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get you guys in there immediately. Oh, they have skirmish mode on. Not good. Right, let's get more in there to bog down the cave trolls. They need to keep firing the catapults. Ugh. Not brilliant. On the other hand, we can move up. Right, the cave trolls are now dying, so hopefully I will be able to start firing my catapult again. Mm. The orcs have not used their numbers advantage in the same way that a player would, in the sense that they could just envelop me. They seem to have gone for the full trying to smash me down at the front approach, which wasn't brilliant because I had units waiting for them in that respect. Right. How are these guys doing? Yep. The spears are holding very, very well. Need to get the catapults in position so I can start firing down on these guys. The Bjornings are doing relatively well. 
the spear line is holding, which is good news because it's the only line I have. I have basically no reserves other than the axemen I needed to deploy to face the trolls. Right, that's actually, you guys can go over here. You guys can get into them. You guys are already in the fight. You archers need to pull back a little bit. Catapult needs to start firing. Get these guys into here. Move my general over to here. Oh, actually. I thought they were going to try and flank me then. Goblin infantry is routing. The ill discipline of the orcs is really costing them here because most of their units are routing. A lot of that was down to the AI's poor judgement though. They really didn't use their trolls too well. I mean, I can see what they were going for. Like, if the human player tried to smash and grab my catapult, that would have been a worthwhile tactic. But, honestly, I just don't see the benefit of not wrapping around. Because, like, you sh he really should have used his number advantage there. Let me get a screenshot there. Screenshot of the spears. Everyone likes the Elven Spears. Got the Knights out here. Oh no, no no no. Keep attacking the Hillman. The Bjornings are still beating the Heavy Goblin Infantry, which is a bit of a lacklustre showing from them. The Snagger Archers haven't taken a great deal of losses, but they haven't really inflicted any sort of damage either. The AI's poor judgement is what has allowed me to basically steamroll them here. Under normal circumstances, the elves, the, how expensive their units are, really do count against them in this mod, in my opinion. Really, I think that you also have to keep in mind that I gave myself 5,000 more florins. I did give the enemy 5,000 more florins as well. Gave them a few upgrades to make up for it as well. Under normal circumstances with 20k, even with some of the corners I've cut in respect of using these Bjornings to pad out my line, I would have had a much smaller army, and it would have been much harder on me, so I did give myself a positive handicap, really. Surely they haven't got much left. Yeah, the Goblin Infantry is going to, is going to falter here, I fear. The hillmen are wavering. I have a number of knights sort of hunting down breaking units. Are there any other units that I can fight over here that aren't breaking? The orc bodyguards, yes, we need to kill the general with all possible haste. Yeah. Those hillmen are breaking. Right, let's halt. Halt firing. As soon as the general dies, that will be it, I believe. Here come the axemen. This will finish him off. And there we go. There we go. Many, many casualties sustained by the enemy. And yet, in this case, it is basically like vanilla third, third age, where your archers are going to be doing an enormous amount of the heavy lifting in any sort of battle situation. It's the same with all the Elven factions there, and it's still true here in this sub-mod, but as a result of the archers being nerfed and as a result of the Elves being far more expensive, you're going to have to be even more careful than you were back in vanilla with them. Because while I was able to very easily win here, it was mainly down to the AI's incompetence and also down to the fact that I gave myself and the AI much more funds than you would normally see in a standard game like 25k in terms of florins is an awful lot and it's it's really necessary to have that much to play the elves and often 20k is as much as you're likely to see at least in my experience and that's when the elves become a lot less of a viable faction to play nonetheless they do have a lot of quality and if you play them correctly then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to pull out a win, even on a pitch battle where maneuverability is not really your strength. You can use your horse archers, but again, in melee against heavy cav of the kingdoms of men, it's going to get itself wrecked. So you do need to be careful. 
It's all down to keeping a good formation and having very, very good micro if you're playing the elves. And while I can do formations well, I'm not really very good when it comes down to the hyper micro that is required when you play the elves with their horse archers and with some of their units. I don't know. The elves aren't really my cup of tea in this sub mod, but nonetheless, they do have some very, very nice units. They're not impossible to play, but yeah. Really, I'll just be repeating myself if I go over it again. Nonetheless, I will be going to a Kingdom of Men next time, I think. Whether that be an Easterling faction or one of the good Kingdoms of Men, I don't know. Maybe having a look at the new and improved Rohan or the new and improved Gondor. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see.